Welcome to my channel. It's a new day and we're going to do more music. But before we do that, I have a special video I want to share with you. This was produced by PragerU and it's a woman named Adrian Johnson. And the title of the video is Why I'm No Longer an Atheist. And I thought that her story was fascinating and so I would share it with you. But before we do that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for supporting me. I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, this video, I guess, needs no further introduction. It's Adrian Johnson talking about why she is no longer an atheist. I had this God-sized hole in my heart. I was trying to fill it with other things and just leaving chaos in my wake. My name is Adrian Johnson, and this is my story. I was raised by two loving, secular parents. We didn't have God. We didn't have religion. We didn't really have a whole lot of moral structure or guidelines. From a young age, because I didn't have God, I, I know it may sound cliche, but I had this God-sized hole in my heart, and so I was trying to fill it with other things. And by the time I became 11, 12 years old, those other things that I was trying to fill that void with were being cool and being popular. And that meant drinking and doing drugs and getting piercings and getting tattoos and starting to be sexual with boys. So my parents, they pretty much let me do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. And when I was 14, 15, 16, that seemed pretty great to me. I was having the time of my life. I didn't realize until much, much later how much damage that was doing to me. So I didn't know anything about politics until I got to college. I did not care about politics when I was in high school. All I cared about in middle school and high school was having fun, being popular, drinking, drugs. When I got to college, I really wanted to have intellectual discussions with my professors and my peers. I decided that I wanted to be a sociology major. I wanted to learn about trends and demographics and how society functioned. I had no idea that sociology is really just the study of three words, racism, sexism, and oppression. If you just repeat those three words over and over again, you'll ace sociology. My professors would say things like, America is founded on racism. And I would sit in the class and I would go, I don't think that's right. But if I don't think that's true, then what is it that I believe? And so I had to go do my own research. So now I had both sides of an argument and I started learning about this is what it means to be on the left. This is what it is to be liberal. This is what it is to be conservative. This is what it means to be libertarian. Oh, okay, well in that case, I guess I'm a libertarian conservative. So when I was a senior, I got to pick whatever topic I wanted to study for an entire year. So I picked to study the topic, the liberal bias in academia. My professor was not happy about that. I was the only student in my program who was denied funding. All of the other students were given grants from the university and they had very liberal topics. They were very confused by me because when I was a senior at UC Santa Barbara, I had spiked purple hair, I had a tongue ring, I had tattoos, and I would open my mouth and loudly defend capitalism and, you know, be a libertarian and say, I'm a conservative. And they would look at me and they would go, you don't look like a conservative. And I would say, well, what am I supposed to look like? Am I supposed to have a, a tennis racket and a pair of golf clubs and a polo shirt? You know, I, I didn't understand why I, could, I couldn't look the way that I did and still be a conservative. I then went to graduate school and I met my ex-husband. After my ex-husband and I got married, I thought that that would make me happy. I was still always trying to fill this void. And I thought that he could complete me and make me whole and make me happy. And he couldn't because no one can. 
I didn't have that realization at the time, unfortunately. I just thought, oh, well, I'm with the wrong person. So if I find another person, then he'll complete me and he'll make me happy and he'll make me whole. I was unfaithful in my marriage. My destructive behavior caused uh, my ex-husband to say, I cannot let you do this to me anymore and I'm leaving you. And then I hit rock bottom. What have I done? I just threw away my entire life. All I did was cry and say, it's so hard, I'm in so much pain, and I just want someone to save me. But nobody could. After years of playing a victim, of being in therapy, of taking medication, of complaining, but never actually taking ownership for my life, I realized, oh, I have to do something different in order to make a change. I started going to self-help groups for people who struggled with sex and love addiction. There was really no other alternative. So I went to these meetings, I went to these groups, and I asked for help. I met someone there who was willing to sort of take me on and be a mentor. And I asked, will you help me? And she said, yeah, yeah, I can help you. Read this book, you know, write these journal entries, write down your story, and uh, you need to get some kind of spiritual practice. I don't care what it is. At first, it made me uncomfortable, but the more I did it, the more I saw that there was something to this God thing. As I'm going through this extremely painful spiritual transformation, a friend of mine invited me to see a play of the screw tape letters. And I opened up the program, oh, what's this about? And the characters are God, the devil. I was like, what? What is, what is this? What am I about to watch? It hit me so deeply. I had been on this spiritual journey for a year at this point. And when I saw this play of the screw tape letters with Max McLean, it blew me away. It's like resonating within me so powerfully that I had to at least consider the option of Christianity, which as a former atheist is the most uncomfortable, ridiculous thing to consider. I knew that God was the answer and I wasn't quite getting it with the yoga and all of those things. There was, there was something else that I wanted. I didn't have like a moment where I became a Christian. But I remember one morning getting ready for work. My whole life was so different than it had been just a few years ago. I like couldn't believe the person I was becoming. And somehow this thought occurred to me that if someone asked, are you a Christian? I'd have to say yes at this point. Like, I'm a Christian now, I, I believe in Jesus. And I found a church in Los Angeles, and I walk in and I see this guy across the room. We're immediately attracted to each other, that I was not ready yet to date. So for a while, we were in this community group together where we would read the Bible together, we would pray for each other. I even told this group when I was gonna go make amends to my ex-husband. I met him in person and took ownership and responsibility for my part in everything and apologized for all of the harm that I had caused him. God had transformed me and it was like that chapter of my life came to a close. And then I was ready to date my new, <laughs> my new husband. I'm married to a wonderful man who loves Jesus more than he loves me. And we have two amazing children together. And I never thought any of this was possible for me. I thought when I hit bottom, well, that's it. I ruined my chance at happiness. I'm never gonna have any of that. And then when I became a Christian, I thought, what nice Christian guy is gonna want these damaged goods? A divorced, adulterous, former atheist covered in tattoos. And God was like, don't worry, honey, I've got this total weirdo picked out for you. This other Christian guy who's also covered in tattoos and has uh, plugs in his earlobes. Our God is the God of a million second chances. And he can work with anything as long as you give it to him. I am satisfied in God unlike anything in this whole world can ever and will ever satisfy me. I can never get it from another person. I can't get it from my status. I can't get it from money. I can't get it from how I look. I can't get it from anything. But with God, I am fully satisfied. 
There were a few years when I really did step away from politics. Politics had been my religion for so long that I needed to step away from it when I discovered my true religion and my God. When I came back to it and I was on PragerU's website and I was just kind of clicking around and I saw a tab that said, come work for us. I used to work in the corporate legal world and I really enjoyed it. It was really intellectually stimulating. But, oh my gosh, if I could work for PragerU, that would be like a dream come true. I left the legal world and the corporate world behind so that I could try to help save America. I wake up every day grateful for my life. I was so desperate. And now I'm here, I have my dream job, I'm married to the man of my dreams, I have two amazing, beautiful children that I love, I have a wonderful life. <laughs> But it's not because of anything I did other than becoming willing. I became willing to take responsibility, to do the next right thing, to follow God, to seek God. He did amazing things with my life. For somebody out there who's feeling like they're in the pit of despair, I would just say it's never too late. It's never, ever, ever too late. You are never too far gone. I know what it's like to feel completely hopeless and to feel like you're completely at the end and to feel like this pain is going to kill you and destroy you. It won't unless you let it. You just have to be willing and let him take over. That's what I did and he completely changed my life. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation today. I could have eaten. So I've, I've had that on my list for a while now to something I, I just wanted to share with you. Um, I thought that her story was very inspiring and that there would be some people on my channel who could relate to it. And so I felt that I should share it with you. Um, my story is quite a bit different from hers, but the end result is the same. No matter what it is in life that you're trying to do to fill the, the uh, void, you'll never accomplish it. And I believe that there are at least two kinds of people. There are people who will be perfectly satisfied with their life regardless of what's going on and think nothing of the uh, hole that's missing the, the missing thing in their life and there are other people who like uh, adrian will go through life trying to fill the hole and eventually god will come in and then that hole will be filled and i know there's some of you that you know if you even bothered to watch this you probably don't believe it you think oh it's a bunch of hokum but i'm here to tell you it's not God is what makes the difference in my life. God is what makes me who I am. My commenters are constantly telling me how calm I am and how, how uh, relaxing it is to listen to me. Well, there's a reason for that. It's not me. It's God. It's because God is at the center of my life that I am the way I am. And you can be that way too, but the first thing you have to do, like Adrian points out, is you have to take responsibility for the things in your life that you've screwed up and admit that you weren't able to do it on your own and realize that you need help. And once you come to that realization, then God will find a way to get in. And it's my prayer that every single person on my channel and every single person that they love and every single person in the world be born again because that's what God wants. I know not everyone is going to be. I know that. I'm, you know, I'm not foolish enough to think that 
the entire world is going to become convinced that God loves them. But some of you will. And my job as a Christian is to plant the seed. After that, it's up to God. So that's what I try to do. And this is one way I plant seeds. This is the Vietnam era vet out.